Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles, and welcome to Blender for Noobs, and welcome back to this 3D printing tutorial, part two of two. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to look at actually taking our model that we created and bringing it into a 3D printing services or service to get it printed out and shipped to your doorstep. Okay, so we have our model here. We've exported it as an STL file. So what you need to do then is find a 3D printing service. Now I have been using this service here called Shapeways. Shapeways uh, seems to be a huge and very popular service. Uh, they seem to be very good. I do not know of, uh, I haven't dug around enough to know what other services are out there, what they offer, uh, what the price differences are. So if anybody has that kind of information, you know, they have a service they can recommend, please put it in the comments. Uh, I definitely would, you know, I would like to find the best service out there for the cheapest that I can get it for, you know. But I can tell you that I have printed with Shapeways and I've been very happy with what I got. So um, what you do, if you, if you use Shapeways, you create a, a free account and then basically you say, go up to your upload button and click upload. And they say, okay, you select a file. And, and they tell you what supported 3D files they have too. Oh, this is another important thing that I wanted to mention to you. Uh, when I first looked into or thought about 3D printing, I thought, you know, I got to make this model as simple as possible. I don't want to, you know, have too many polygons or anything. And I'm worried about the size and all this stuff. And I'm learning that, or I have learned that 3D printing is very, very, um, it's grown up a lot since I first heard about it. I'll put it that way. So you can, as you can see on this one, you can have a file that's, you know, up to 64 megabytes or 1 million polygons. So you can have a very, very smooth plane because you've subsurfed the heck out of it. Um, so you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to constrict yourself. You know, of course you want to still maintain your good modeling practices, but, but it's nice to know that, um, it has a very high limit on it. And then the file types, uh, the Colada Day format, DAE or whatever, OBJ. So a lot of the standard formats you'll see here that it takes, uh, I think the day, uh, Colada format, the DAE, uh, actually can handle things like texture and color. So that's why you would, you, well, actually right here it is for color 3D. So you can see what can be used there. So that's nice. And we can export uh, Collada from Blender. I haven't done that, but you can do it. Um, but STL is the main format that I've been using. And then if you do prints, I haven't done any of that. And then Privacy Private by default. Okay, so first thing you want to do is select your file. So you go look for your STL file and bring that in. And next thing you want to look at is the model units. Very important, of course. I did mine um, in the regular blender units, which I am looking at as millimeters. So I'm going to leave it as millimeters and upload. So it uploads your file and then it immediately starts processing and looking for possible problems with your work. So it's going under an inspection process. So <laughs> I kind of screwed up here and I picked up, I guess, what was my um, background plane here without even thinking it was in there. That was on another level in Blender, so I need to fix that real quick. I was kind of wondering why it was, you know, 30 centimeters. Okay, so I just fixed that and that's why, you know... It's good to have a work file. So we, I just easily went in there and found the different parts that didn't apply to my model and removed them and exported it again to STL. So I'm going to do another upload, select my file, STL, make sure it's millimeters, upload. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so we see our model there. We can kind of move around and look at it. It's, that's our model. And we can look at the size. 
it is 10 by 10 by two centimeters. So that's where we want to be. This is very important to check your size. So you can make sure that when you exported it, that came over correctly. And, you know, you can look at these things like master volume. And this is more important to the, um, the uh, space it's going to take up in the 3D printer. Now, as soon as you bring this in, you'll notice that it is starting to check your model out. It's starting to give you prices of the model. So, you know, probably if I hadn't hollowed it out, it probably would have been like, I don't know, in this case, maybe $15 or $16. Um, but you can see that they offer all these different materials, met you know, metallic plastic, frosted, plastic, acrylic, stainless steel, and you see the prices are going up. You can go to precious metal and get silver and polished brass, 14 karat gold, $10,000 for this little plane. So yeah, if anybody wants to buy this plane for me in 14 karat gold, feel free. But if you really love me, then buy it in platinum and I'll resell it. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can do some pretty cool things here. I think what I thought, you know, something really cool. Uh, if you want to like model some, some, uh, I don't know, specialized earrings for your girlfriend or something, you can do that in gold um, with something that small. Hopefully it wouldn't be, you know, too terribly much, but uh, that'd be a really cool gift to give somebody. So anyway, so it's loading. What you can also do is say, okay, I want this, um, this white plastic that I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm just going to choose that. You can go to these view 3d tools while it's loading and it'll give you a more detailed version of what it's doing. So you can see that it's checking the mesh integrity and repair. So I said, yep, that's good. The bounding box, which is, you know, the overall size, is it going to fit in the printer? Okay. Yes, that's good. This wall thickness is where you will have 99% of your problems. Like I said, in the last, Part of the tutorial um, when you create that inner you know hollow out that inner part and, and put an escape hole that wall thickness will get you very often so that's what it's looking very closely with like you know their computers are using microscopic and just you know magnifying glass on it and saying did he do this right or did he not do this right we're gonna find out so it's checking and you're sitting there sweating because it's like taking a long time. But as it's doing that, if you want to, you can click on wall thickness and it'll tell you right here what their guidelines are. Remember I said it was 0.7 millimeters. That's the minimum supported wall thickness. Um, and then if you have a wall, this is the minimum un unsupported wall. And I guess that's something that maybe sticks out from the model. It can't be, you know, smaller than that. Um, and then if you have any loose shells, I don't think I've ever had any problem with that. And in machine space that has to do with, um, well, you can read it on here, but basically is it going to fit in the machine space with other models? Uh, kind, kind of optimally where it's not going to take up, you know, too much space or whatever. So it's very cool, you know, when you click on this, you can get like a preview of your model and see what's going on. Now, th these are all automatic checks that it runs through. And then after you buy it, uh, there's technicians or whoever goes through a more uh, intricate check. And they will basically, when you say, okay, I'm going to buy this, then it goes through like a one, two, three, four step. And one of the steps is, you know, we're checking your model to make sure that we can really, really print it. Okay. We're okay with this, but we got more checks we got to do. So they'll go through that. And then, you know, then it goes over the step where it's printing and then it goes over the step where it's shipping and then it arrives in your front door. Now, while this is thinking, I'm going to tell you about the model because I wanted to do a test model, uh, 3d print to say, okay, I did it. I, because I didn't want to give you a tutorial and, and say, well, you know, I haven't really even done this, but it should work. That just, that wouldn't be good. 
So what I did is I took a spaceship that I designed in Blender and I went through the process of what you just seen with the plane sort of um, just made sure that it was 3D print capable. Then I thought, well, I'm going to get fancy and I'm going to make a little stand to put this on. So it looks like the spaceship is kind of pointing at an angle up towards the stars, but it, it's, a, it's a little figurine and it can sit on a desk. And um, I think I made it like something like, I think I did make it like four inches uh, long. But anyway, uh, I really just guessed at, at the stand part of it because I had the uh, thing that was holding the model on the stand was like a curved C shape. And I didn't know if it was structurally, <laughs> if it's going to really work, but it ended up working really, really nice. So I did that, sent it in, you know, I had a little problem where it didn't like the, the wall thickness. So I fixed that and then I bought it. Uh, this thing was like, uh, it was close to $20, but anyway, so it went through the process, got it shipped to me and I opened the box. And, you know, as soon as I seen that thing, it's like, wow, it's like, this is something that I designed in Blender and here I can hold it in my hand. And, uh, it's just, I don't know. I think the first model you print is just a really cool feeling. Uh, something that you created and here it is in real life so it was pretty cool to do that so this wall thickness takes forever so i'm going to let this run and i'll come back to you when it's done okay for some reason this is taking forever a lot longer than usual it's been over 10 minutes now so i'm going to go forward this loose shells usually i don't have a problem with that so i think that'll probably pass but it's just running and running and running so like I said, wall thickness, you can see there's a problem here. Like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's what is, you know, that's going to be the problem that you run into. So if we click on wall thickness, then it'll actually show us, give us a hint of what the problem is. So green is safe, yellow is kind of suspect, and blue is fixed. So we want to look for the yellow the suspect area. And there we have it, our crazy, crazy thin, um, tail fin. So this is not a problem with the, um, I'm gonna zoom around here. This is not a problem with the, um, the hollowed out thing that I did because I didn't even get into that. It's a problem that this tail fin is too thin to begin with as it's modeled. So, uh, what I can do is I can either go back to the model and I can say, okay, I just need to widen this thing up a little bit or uh, Shapeways gives the option to try to fix it. So I can click on fix and then it goes through this, you know, please wait while we generate thin wall fixes. Now I have done this before and it's actually fixed it. Uh, sometimes it is something that it can't fix and you want to fix it manually. Uh, a lot of times I'll say, well, I really want to fix my original model, you know, so that my original model is good. Another thing you can do is uh, if it does fix it, here automatically, you can come back here, back to the model, and you can do a download. So you can download the fixed model and you can keep that on, on file so you'll have it. So either way is fine. Okay, so it fixed it and it says uh, price after fixing. Sometimes it may affect the price. In this case, it really didn't, I don't think. So it'll tell you, you know, why. So you can view the original model or the fixed model, and you can go in here and you can you can see on the blue now where it has been fixed. So I can do save and exit. And now it's going to come back and it's going to go through its automatic checks all over again. Now I'm not going to let you, you know, I'm not going to have you sit and wait for all this to happen. If you noticed on the um, previous screen there, it did go through the loose shells and, it, and that was okay. Oh, and by the way, if we click on mesh integrity and repair, you know, you know, each one of these gives you an explanation of what it means, but you can kind of read some of this and see what your model, you know, how it should be in order to work. Now, a lot of these things that you see here, um, interestingly enough, 
has a lot to do with good modeling practices. And the good modeling practices that we talk about, you know, th this was all something that existed way before 3D printing was ever invented. So it's quite interesting that those same uh, good modeling habits and, and good modeling practices are completely necessary in order to 3D print your model. So it's not just like, oh, you know, you should follow these guidelines. It really means something when you're following those good practices. So something to keep in mind anyway. Okay, so after a very long time, for some reason it's taking forever right now, um, we see that everything is checked off. It's ready to go. Everything looks good. It's in the green. So now what you do is you can click the Buy Now button and you can go ahead and get the process started of getting your 3D model printed and shipped to you. So that is pretty much it, guys. That's what it takes to create your model and get it ready for 3D printing and bring it over to a 3D uh, printing service. Like I said, you know, if you guys have any suggest suggestions on different services or any other suggestions about 3D printing that you've run into that might be helpful to others, please comment below. So for now, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.